Now that we have the candy box created, we're going to create the candy bar. But first, I'm going to put a polygon plane down as a floor or ground or surface reference. Going to my top view, I'll zoom way back. And I'll hold down my space bar to get my hot box, create polygon primitives and plane. I'll drag a plane of any size for the time being. Hitting 4 on the keyboard, I'll hold down my X on the keyboard and snap it to the center of the viewport. In order to create the candy bar, we need a, another polygon that is similar in size and thickness as the box. I'm selecting my box and just sliding it to the right a bit so that I can get my template. Because I need my template and it goes below my grid, I'm going to add layers to manage my file. I'll select the ground plane first and going to the bottom of the channel box where the layers are located, I'll click on the last icon which appears to be a flat white plane with a blue ball on it. When I click on it, it gives me my layer and it adds whatever was selected to that layer. I'll double click on layer 1 and I'll name it appropriately. Now with all my components added to their own layers, I'm going to turn off the candy box and the plane, leaving the template on. I'm going to use a template to make the candy bar. Going to my top view, I'm going to hold down the space bar, go to Create, Polygon Primitives, and Cube. I'll use the template to make the footprint of the candy bar. Stopping short of the piece at the very bottom in this template, which represents the, the flaps of the box. I'll tap my space bar and go into my perspective view. Clicking on my geometry, I'll drag up the thickness. I'm going to make it about half the height because it's going to be a segmented candy bar when it's done. Next, we're going to add the segments on top. I'll right click and choose face, shift selecting all the faces on the top plane. I can hold my control key as I shift select, and if I were to accidentally click on a selected face, it remains in the selection. If I wanted to take a face out of the selection, I would hold just the shift and click on the face. We're going to use the extrude tool to make the segments. First, I'll go to Edit Mesh, Extrude, and the Attributes. I'm going to make sure that I reset it to the original state. If I wanted to add it to my shelf, I would hold down the Command Shift on the Mac, Control Shift on a PC, going to Edit Mesh and clicking on Extrude. If I need to delete any of the icons on my shelf, I can right click and choose Delete. With the faces selected now, I'll click on the Extrude tool. And when I do, the vertices will be located in one of the corners. There's also an editing window that pops up. And I'm going to change where it says Keep Faces Together. I'll click on On, and it turns it off. This will allow us to model each of these separately. I'm going to go to the Z-axis and pull it up to give it the height I want. I'll use the template to rough in the height I need. Now I'm going to access the Scale tool that's here. Clicking on any of the three boxes that appear at the end of the vertices, it will activate the middle. I'll click on the middle light blue box and drag to the left and now I can segment it however I choose. I'll right click, go back to the object mode, delete by type history. Now I want to break off a piece. I'll turn off the template and I'll right click and choose face. I'm going to select faces of one piece here, making sure that I get all those segments. Once again, I'll hit 4 on the keyboard to make sure I have what I want. Holding down the shift and control, I'll select any faces I need to add. With all the sections selected, I'm going to hold down my spacebar, go to Edit Mesh, 
and down at the bottom of the menu you'll see extract. I'll right click and choose object mode. If I select the corner that I extracted with the move tool, I can see that it's separate. I'll center the pivot and delete by type mystery. I'm going to move it out so I can see that I still have open areas I need to close off to make it solid again. In order to do that, we're going to use a toolbar that's located in the upper right hand corner of the user interface. It appears to be a little hammer and kind of a Rubik's Cube. When I click on that, I get a number of tools in the attribute editor on the right. I'm looking for a tool called the Bridge Tool. With the Bridge Tool, I will be able to go to both of these pieces of geometry and I'll do the piece that's been broken off first. I'm going to right click, choose Edge, and I'll select two opposite edges. And when I click on Bridge, it will close it out for me. Turning around to the other open side, once again I'll shift select opposing edges and click on bridge. I'm going to do the same for the rest of the candy bar. Selecting, right click, edge, shift select the one on top, the one directly below, click on bridge, and the same over here. And click on bridge. So we should have something like this. The last thing I'm going to do is put a color on it. To add my material, I'll marquee select both pieces, right click, assign new material, Arnold, and AI standard surface. In the attributes, I'll name it appropriately. And I'll take the specular weight down to zero clicking on the color tab under base I'll give it sort of a brown chocolate color I'll leave it at a middle value and now we have the candy bar created